Shalom from Israel and welcome to In the Gap, where we bring you the truth from a biblical perspective, from Israel, about Israel and about the world. And today we truly want to learn what the Word of God has to say about the faith we must have in God's ultimate will and plan for our lives. Can we hear God's voice? Do we hear God's voice? And is he always with us? That's a very powerful question. And if we let him into our hearts, does we, do we really expect always a blessing? Or do we expect a clear instruction? Uh, that's the matter of the heart of how we perceive God. And we'll talk about that today. Yaakov, I do believe that he's always with us. That's really true. We need to mention that if we try to hide something before God, from God, or if we sin, or if God's will and his word becomes a secondary thing in our lives, I don't think we can expect him to talk to us and to bless us with his presence. So our responsibility is to, to read the word of God and to walk this narrow holy path. Otherwise, God who is holy, who is really holy, he cannot interact with us. While we know that God is love, we also know that he will not compromise on his holiness. Therefore, repentance is a vital thing in our walk with God. John tells us, if we say that we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us, to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all, and I'm talking about all, unrighteousness. I want to really encourage you, don't you dare think that there is some sin that is really uh, forgiven easier than other if repentance is intimate, is if repentance is real, there is forgiveness for all sin. And may God bless you with a hard desire to repent every time you sleep. Right. I, I really think this is so, so important. I mean, if we, there's nothing more precious, nothing more valuable in life than hearing the voice of God. When you hear the voice of God, that's, that's powerful. But there is, the demand on our lives, people take it so lightly, so easy, expecting God to really speak to them. But to really walk those, this narrow path, there the voice comes and their life becomes so colorful then life becomes so beautiful, such adventurous. So, you know, it's, it's amazing life. Every time we hear the voice of God and we obey, blessing and great blessing come, not only to our yeah, lives, but, but the people around us. But to Abraham, it came a blessing to all the nations, all the way to you, hello. Hello out there, this, this, this obedient and hearing the voice of God, in taking Isaac to the altar, come God and says that he, because he obeyed the voice, he will bless all the nations. Go in. Hello there. It's you. And who knows, you know, what blessing you bring to your family, your surrounding, your church, your environment, um, developing a life of hearing the voice of God, not your soul, but the voice of God obeying, and from there come great blessing to the surrounding. Right. So, so we really must learn to submit our will to God's will, to obey Him all the way, so we can receive His gifts and His blessings, not just expect it for nothing, but really obey Him and follow Him. Our topic today is mentioned many times throughout the Bible and we'll touch on a few valid scriptures today and learn about the hand of God in each and every one of our lives. But first, let's get an update on what is going on in Israel today. Thank you, Jacob and Elisheva, and welcome to Israel Update, your source for Israeli news from a Christian perspective. I am Sagi Cohen, and here is today's story. 
While the Arabic Muslim attacks on Jews in Israel continue, it has sadly become almost a routine for the Jewish people in their homeland. And as we have previously reported, the theft of Jewish land by Arab Muslims with international backing continues with no interruption. But this comes with no surprise to the Jewish nation since the hatred towards the Jewish people is part of an ongoing satanic attack on the chosen nation of God. So we wanted to take the time and show you how the lies of the Palestinian and the Muslim agenda are distorting your views of the most humane and moral army in the world, the Jewish military, the IDF. Please take the time to look at these images and see that no matter how much they will beat us, kill us, hate us, and slander us, as a nation chosen by God, we will continue to help them to love mankind and be kind to anyone, friend or foe. This brings the Jewish nation closer to God, as is written in Matthew 5. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. For he causes his Son to rise on the evil and the good. Please continue to pray for the peace of Jerusalem and the nation of Israel. Back to you, Jacob and Elisheva. Welcome back. So the hand of God, the will of God, the word of God, you may think that just by reading the scripture, you can get close to God or that you will better understand him. This is true. Reading the Bible is essential if we want to hear the voice of the Lord. But reading the Bible is not enough. And it's not just about that, beloved. Along with the reading must come a burning desire to believe that which we read and to put our trust in the word of God. And then furthermore, we better obey what we read. For example, when the Bible really tells you to be thankful for all things, to rejoice in all things, when it tells you to share the gospel, not to be ashamed of the gospel, and so many other clear instructions which we really have in the Bible. And, and, and that we don't really care for things which are loud, sound, clear, voice of God through the pages of scriptures. When we don't care for that, can we expect God to just talk to us into, you know, uh, the unique things, the special things, the details of, 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 of life? I mean... How does God talk to us? How, how can we hear him? And let me answer you. Sometimes it is really indeed through the Holy Scripture. But other times it may be a burning bush experience such as we see Moses had. It is circumstances. But no matter in what way God has chosen to reveal himself to us in our daily life, it is up to us to first understand it. Is it God talking to us? And once we realize it is God talking to us, we truly better obey it and act upon truth. Right. So it's most important to every believer that we learn to recognize his voice and to distinguish it from other voices, even the voice of our own soul. And remember, even the enemy talks the word of God. Mm. When he puts sure. forth all his own, we read in John chapter 10, he goes ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. A stranger they simply will not follow, but will flee from him because they do not know the voice of a stranger. This training takes place when we read the Bible, the word of God, his truth, and we really need to train our ears, our heart to, to, to know his voice. Here in the word of God, we see God's character. We understand exactly what he wants, his statutes, his guidelines. And if anything comes our way that differs from that, we will recognize it immediately since the truth is so deep in our heart, thanks to the Holy Spirit. We will know it's not from him when it's not from him. Also in, in the story of Samuel, we, realize, we, we remember when the Lord came and called Samuel, Samuel, Samuel simply said, speak, for your servant is listening. Once you realize that it's God talking to you, 
all you have to do is to listen, to accept, and to do what it is that he has told you to do. Yes, Elisheva, it's so true what you're really saying here. There are many examples. I mean, we really have to know that. Many examples in the Bible of people that heard the voice of the Lord and obeyed. Today, many believers expect God to talk blessing while in the Bible, when God speaks, oftentimes it meant trouble. But you might say now that this is different today because now we live under the new covenant and things have changed. So let's read in the New Testament a few verses in Hebrews 11. In the New Testament, you're sure it's from there? <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. And others experienced mockings and scorchings. Yes, also chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn in two, they were tempted, they were put to death with a sword. They, were about, they went about in sheepskin, in goatskins, being this destitute, afflicted, ill-treated, men of whom the world was not worthy, wandering in deserts and mountains and caves and holes in the ground. That's the New Testament. Most people think that Jesus came to just make life smoothy and rosy. Beloved of God, if we look at our own lives, you, me, and you, Elisheva, if we look at our lives all together, we see how things have been unfolded in our lives. We can see how an invisible hand has guided us in spite of us, in spite of ourselves. The thing that I, I see in my life, you know, the more I suffer, the closer I draw to God. Mm. And then even suffering is the most blessed time because, uh, because you draw close to God. So true, so true. We see that these rough times, the times we felt so far away from God, were so very needed in order to bring us to the place God wanted us to be and to form a character in us that is more like him, our Lord. So we see that God is never far away. He's always at work in our lives. If we look at our lives, we can see that even in the worst of times, God was there, keeping us above the waters. Like we read in Psalm 23, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. I'm sure you've all read those verses a hundred times, but what do they really mean? The Hebrew word for rod in scripture is shevet. This word refers to the rod of discipline that was used to educate the young. So when David says, your rod will comfort me, he literally means that the pain I suffer is nothing but a lesson you are giving me. David really took pleasure, joy in the wrath of God, knowing that it builds up his character and it really corrects him and it really is giving him guidelines. So even as David suffered, he knew that his suffering had a purpose and that God was always with him and in control. Beloved of God, we want to discuss this topic further, but before that, I really want you to get excited with me. I mean, exuberant. I mean, really get dancing with me, singing with me, and one glorious, great hallelujah with me for the faithfulness of God, for the way in which God is doing for his namesake among his people. For over 30 years in the streets of Israel, doing whatever it takes to let Israel understand Jesus the Jew. I mean, street corner, millions of tracts, hundreds of thousands of books and literatures, countless conversations. I mean, moving, maneuvering people from all over the world, group after group after group after group, really traveling the entire land time and time and time and again. And now, finally, God in his goodness and his grace and his mercy and his wisdom and his might and his power allow me to come, up, to come up with my next film. We did one, as you well know, and if you didn't see it, you better see it, The Other Side of the Cross, which really had its impact on Israel. But now, 
a film about my life. It's called The Messenger, a documentary film, 80 minutes long, powerful film that I know will just bring Jesus on the table before Israel loud, sound, and clear. And I want to encourage you uh, to ask for it. We'd love to send it to you. We really want to ask you for prayer, 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 prayer for this movie that it will be shown in cinema on the 15th of March is the Hatzagat Bechora. Premier. The premiere. Hatzagat Bechora on the 15th of March, the premiere. And then it will be shown, it will be shown in the cinema in Israel. Let's take a look at the promo and uh, get an idea of what is it really all about. Yaakov <laughs> Chai. במשימה. הוא כמו בולדוזר, הוא, יש לו משהו והוא הולך איתו. אם אתה עומד לו בדרך, זה הבעיה שלך. זאת האמת. יכול להיות שהוא באמת המשיח המובטח ופספסנו אותו. ישוע היה יהודי, ישוע לא הביא דעת חדשה. היטלריסטים, אם אכזיכם תסתמכו מארצנו. מתפללים יומם ולילה בשבילכם. איך אני יכול פרוד מאישה, פרוד מילדים, בכלל לדבר על הבשורה שכל כולה אהבה? הרושם שזה מותיר עליך, יכול לשנות לך את החיים. Welcome back. Aren't you excited with us about this film? I do believe with all my heart that this will move so many people in Israel to, to think about our faith, to think about Yeshua one more time or the first time. And we really covered your prayer that you pray with us that when this movie comes out, all Israel will see it. In Christ, you can do all things, beloved. Right. Our subject today is if God is talking to us, if he is with us. So I'm reminded, and I really want to share with you a poem that brings tears to my eyes every time I read it. Mm. And I'm, I'm quite certain everybody knows it even, but it's a good reminder. One night a man had a dream. He dreamed he was walking along the beach with the Lord and across the sky flashed scenes from his life. For each scene, he noticed two sets of footprints in the sand, one belonging to him and the other to the Lord. When the last scene of his life flashed before him, he looked back at the footprints in the sand, and he noticed that many times along the path of his life, there was only one set of footprints. He also noticed that it happened at the very lowest and saddest, saddest times of his life. This really bothered him, and he questioned the Lord about it. Lord, you said that once I decided to follow you, you would walk with me all the way. But I have noticed that during the most troublesome times in my life, there's only one set of footprints. I don't understand why when I needed you most, you would leave me. The Lord replied, my precious, precious child, I love you, and I would never leave you. During your times of trial and suffering, when you see only one set of footprints, I was, it was then that I carried you. So really, God is ever-present in our life, and we should know that. And when we are at our lowest, this is when He carries us, lifts us up, and helps us through the rough patches. When have you seen such a teacher that while giving you a test, he sits next to you and helps you pass it? God is great. He knows our feeble ways. He knows our shortcoming. He knows where we really 
unable, and he comes along, sits next to us. God is so great, he knows how to balance our lives in such a way that we learn and advance and rise up with wings of eagle from the lessons of life to become better. Yeah. Right, and that's actually our calling in life to, to build his kingdom. But still, we want to reach out from here to all of you who are going through hardships in your life, whether it is due to a lack of money, an unsatisfying job, a difficult marriage, problematic children, anything that may cause you to doubt yourself or your faith. It is okay to have difficulties, to feel that life is overwhelming. These feelings are normal because we are only human and life throws those things at us. But praise God, we are more than overcomers since our Lord overcame this world already. We are from God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. Our troubles are but a speck of dust in God's eyes, and our whole life is but a day for him. It says in Psalm 13, How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart all the day? How long will my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Enlighten my eyes, or I will sleep the sleep of death, and my enemy will say I have overcome him, and my adversaries will rejoice when I am shaken. But I have trusted in your loving kindness. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. So feeling overwhelmed and uncertain about life is normal at times, but there is a vast distance between feeling this way and giving in to these emotions. To give up is to lose faith. Faith in God, faith in his plan for you, faith that he is on, in control of all things, faith that all things will work out for good and that he has a good plan for your life. We all know these verses by heart. Let's believe it in every circumstance. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare and not for calamity, to give you a future and a hope, in Jeremiah 29. And who are we to understand his will, his acts? We must continue to walk in his footsteps and keep our faith that he is there always. Even when we look back and see only one set of footprints in the sand, he is there. Wow. So true. Let us pray, beloved of God, and let us join our hearts together. Father, where, we, where will we ever find the words to express our hearts? To the wonders of your love, to the wonders of your grace and your mercy, and the way in which you hold on to us is far greater than the way in which we know how to hold on to you. Our good shepherd, the rock of our salvation, El Shaddai, El Gibor, Aviad, Sar Shalom, creator of heaven and earth who have come upon himself to come and dwell within us in your very blood, I want to thank you, Father, for the gift of faith that you've given us, faith in your word. And I pray that each and every one of our brothers and sisters out there will truly, by your grace and your mercy, Father, hear your voice. People just so much in desperate need to hear your voice. May they hear your voice constantly, continuously. I love you. I love you. I step your name in the book of life. And if there is anyone there that have not really come to such point of faith in life and realizing that you have come to shed blood in order to purchase life, that today will be the day of salvation. 
but for those for those who really know you father i pray that they will hear your voice continuously i never leave you nor forsake you i love you i have loved you so much that i've come and given you my very life for you on that cross in my only begotten son yeshua i love you so much so that i have signed your name in the book of life in my very blood I love you so much so that I am really going ahead of you even as I went ahead of Abraham Joseph Moses Joshua I'm going ahead of you and our lives will be so that we just trust him so much so that nothing will shake us as we go through life because there is no greater blessing than knowing deep inside I'm serving the Lord and I'm about my father's business right from here Tel Aviv Israel a holy kiss Elisheva you too Shalom shalom a holy kiss and we love you dearly and keep in touch Shalom shalom